What if we restored an ancient city into what it used to look like? And here's how to make the jungle temples 20 times better. And this is every way to transform your Minecraft structures. And hey, the YouTube council bets me that you can't subscribe to this channel before I dig down to bedrock. So, to prove them wrong, instamine that sub button down below. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Desert temples are iconic, but boring. And well, they did get an update in 1.20 that was just adding in suspicious sand, which without criticizing the whole archaeology system, really wasn't much of a change that these needed. And so what if instead of our desert temples looking like this, you saw something like this sticking out of the ground? It's a lot more impressive for one. And I think what Young does here in the Better Desert Temples mod gives us not only a look that fits them better, but also makes the inside more of a challenge too. And now if you were to stumble inside of one of these, it's not just some simple TNT trap that you can easily dismantle. Don't dig the center block and you're good. But now we've got things like puzzles on top of the traps, as well as difficult mobs that have insane gear. And that way, if you want to get the better loot that's inside of these temples, you actually have to fight for it. And honestly, I think with the world height changing so much in 1.18, it would be great for our structures to also get bigger too. Because while the world size might have doubled, that makes our tiny structures feel a lot smaller on this side. This user restored every piece of the Bastion remnants that you can find in the game. And now, instead of walking over cracked black stone into holes, of lava, we've instead got polished black stone bricks. Oh, and in this example, they also took it out of the nether, which even I know that's a better location. And while the black of the bastion's still pretty ominous, I think it's really cool to see just how impressive these builds are when you're not getting killed by piglin brutes for appreciating them. And if you're wondering why someone would take this much time to do this, I mean, come on, just look at their skin. Clearly they were on the piglin side all along. Young didn't just improve the desert temples though, since we can also see their great work being put into the witch huts that we see as well. And now with this, not only does our basic witch hut look a lot better, but but it's also not the only one that can spawn. And now there's a chance of them spawning on land, as a duplex, or even as this new structure called the Witch's Circle. And then when you go inside of these huts, you're not gonna be disappointed on the interior either, since the loot got more meaningful too. Like for example, check inside of one of the brewing stands and it'll hint at some of the vanilla potion recipes, which I think is a great way to make the structures more interesting and also teach the player without feeling like you're teaching them. But with Mojang updating the swamp biomes in the wild update, it's too bad they never considered to change the only unique structure to the swamps and maybe what Young's done here could inspire them. Jungle temples might be even lamer than the desert temples. I mean, at least the desert temples have some good loot. But jungle temples, for how much rarer they are, really don't offer anything interesting to get, outside of maybe the new armor trim that you can find inside. That is, until we check out this new version with the Aztec temple. As user hymns remodeled here, not only does the jungle temple get a lot more impressive, but you can also go inside to find many different things on display, like rare blocks from different biomes, even some stuff from the nether, which is pretty cool for lore building. And while the four emerald blocks at the top of this might be a little generous, if it was added into the base game. It's not like emeralds are hard to get anyway. We've exploited plenty of villages in our time. That's just pocket change up there. With the changes to the snapshots in 1.20.2, Mojang seems to yet again be reworking how we use villagers. But with all these changes to villagers themselves, I think Mojang should at least Trojan horse it in with a couple of new changes to the villages structures. And for inspiration, I think the better villages mod on Forge is a pretty good first start. But I also love the added details of giving each one of these a unique statue. Like this icy villager in the snow village, and then a stone shovel for the more agricultural savannah village. Plus, I think taking inspiration for the architecture from what would be more realistic for these kind of biome types, that's really cool. And I think if Mojang added these in and then lowered the rarity of villages, it would make coming across one of these huge structures feel even more special. Since let's be honest, since the 1.14 update, finding villages has been a little more than an oh, when we want it to be a yes. <laughs> Minecraft shipwrecks are boring. I mean, take it from me, I've had to raid a hundred of these things. I'm sick of seeing them. But even with that bias, I think what TBC Miles has done here makes these shipwrecks even more interesting. For one, I rarely see builds on a diagonal look good, so to already do that, that's impressive in its own right. But I also think it would be really neat to be able to see these poking out of the water more than just getting lucky if you happen to see it in the clear water of a warm ocean biome. As is in the current game, your best bet of finding a shipwreck is to chug a night vision potion and look down there. And so I think this saves us the hassle and makes these a lot cooler to find too. I'm not going to argue with either part of that equation. And we don't just have to upgrade the ruined things in the water, but also the ocean ruins. Taken after what Waddles did here, they took what would have been one of the most boring structures in the game and made it into something that you actually want to visit. Because let's face it, between the ocean monument, the shipwrecks, and even the geodes that you can see popping out of the water, all of those are more interesting than just getting speared by a couple of drowned. But with something like this, that would not only give Mojang a new way to add in new kinds of loot, but you could then also theme them to the different kind of oceans that they can spawn inside of. And much like theming the villages 
run where they spawn. I think this could also be really cool to see for the world building, instead of just seeing them bailed out of sandstone or stone bricks. And hey, maybe this would give us a way to find ocean monument maps instead of the cartographer. Finding them in here would make it for a cool quest. Though there is also the issue that it's much easier to find an ocean monument than it is to find most things in the ocean. So maybe that would have to be tweaked too. Now, ruined portals aren't much to look at, which I mean, they're ruined. What did you really expect? But if this data pack's anything to go by, they definitely don't have to be. And with these changes, not only are they gonna stand out more against the world, making them a lot more of an event to find than just sticking out in the open, but they'll also be housing a whole bunch of new piglin loot, which I think is just great. It's like getting a free sample before you have to go visit the bastions for yourself. Like you might be able to get these ones without having to deal with the piglin brutes, but if you want any more, you're gonna have to fix up that portal and come to the other side. And if a change like this were to happen that made these portals even bigger, but then rarer to find, I think that'd be pretty special because right now they stick out like a sore thumb, especially when you see one underwater. Minecraft igloos don't have a lot going for them. And really, once you know about the secret basement underneath, that's about all that's interesting going on here. But thanks to what Miles Place has done here, we go from an igloo to way more of a snow monument. And in these new snow castles, you trade out that lesson about learning how to cure villagers, and instead, you'll have a bunch of new loot to find. Which, with how sparse these snowy tundras can be to explore, that definitely breaks up the monotony. Finding an end city in Minecraft's exciting, but it has nothing to do with the structure itself, and everything to do with the chance of finding that elytra. Which, don't get me wrong, that's more than enough of a reason to go search one of these out, but using this data pack by Ick Phillip, the cities themselves also become a destination to go search out, just because of how cool they look. And I think the addition of adding in the warped stem blocks to break up some of the purple color with the endstone, it looks really nice. Even then, when you remove all of the hazards, I think this change would make it into a place that you want to hang out at. And come on, look at how cool the end ships look, turning into blimps in the sky. Yeah, I just think that's fun. Usually when I come across an ocean monument while I'm rowing my boat over the ocean, I tend to just swerve out of the way and avoid it. Now, they can have some useful loot, but once you've raided one, it's not worth your time to go explore another. But when the ocean monuments look as cool as what Trixie Blocks did here, yeah, I I think that's always worth a visit. And look at the size of this thing. Even trying to get it all in one shot with this camera is tough enough. And with the addition of added chests for loot, as well as the modified sponge rooms that you're gonna find treasure inside of, it's become a lot more exciting to explore, especially in survival. And also, I think the size plays to its benefit here, since in the regular game, it's way too easy just to take a milk bucket and go through the entire temple in one cycle. Once you get rid of the mining fatigue, it's not much of a worry. But if we could do it like this, it's tough to explore the whole thing in one minute. You definitely have to do it the proper way if you wanted to get everything out of it. For how hard it is to find woodland mansions, you'd think that they would have more to offer. And even when you buy one of the woodland mansion explorer maps from a cartographer, it's not even a guarantee that they'll generate on it. So at that point, the loot inside has to really justify all the hassle to find it. And does it? Well, let's be honest, if you got yourself a raid farm or anything like that, there's barely any reason to search out one of these things. The armor trims help, but only slightly. But with the changes that we get from a mod like Fancier Mansions, then that at least makes it a little cooler to visit these. Now this mod in particular doesn't change the loot, but it does change the entire atmosphere of the build. So for example, Birch doesn't really go with the aesthetic of everything else. And now it's completely removed, making it a lot more fitting in the dark oak forest that it generates within. So if you're able to get changes like this to make the mansions feel newer, and then maybe get in a new illager type that only spawns in this mansion, then I think we'd have something really exciting to see here. Bojang doesn't give out a lot of changes to the end dimension, and they give out even less to the end island itself. So if they want to explore this island again, I think doing something like the user Vivid Hangouts example here could be really special. In this case, the towers aren't just made of obsidian, but they've also got newer blocks that are generating as well. And while in the current version, this would be a problem since the end dragon could just fly in and break everything. If this wasn't done with blocks that had that property, but instead, maybe new ones were added in for the towers to get the same effect, then I think we'd have a happy medium. And come on, shooting an end crystal that looks like this looks a lot cooler than one that just spawns on a platform like so. And with a bigger one that could also make it spell out Mojang too, since I know they're fell into doing that. In the 1.16 update, we got a bunch of new blocks for the nether brick variants. But what's weird is that those don't generate naturally. So while we got those changes, we didn't get any changes to how our nether fortresses generate. And I think that's a missed opportunity and one that bygone nether corrects. Since at this, things like red nether bricks will now generate inside of the vanilla world. And I've complained in the past about cracked nether brick never generating naturally. After all, the way that you make it is with cooking it with heat, you're not gonna find more heat than inside of the nether. It would make sense if these spawn inside of the fortresses. So even just going through and giving an overhaul to structures that already exist with this, that'd be fun to see. 
Let's be honest, the vanilla stronghold's boring, and most of the time, exploring it just feels like a nuisance while you're trying to get to the end portal. But what if we can make the structure itself actually its own destination? And with what Young's done here in the Better Strongholds mod, for one, it's overall less confusing than the vanilla stronghold. You won't get random ravines that just cut through it and ruin the generation. But you also get new room types as well. And even the portal room looks so much better here. Now there's still lava, but it's integrated in a much more natural way, instead of just a three by three puddle underneath the portal. After all, Eyes of Ender already make it pretty easy to find these things, so making them more exciting themselves, that just seems fair. When you first start playing Minecraft, finding a mineshaft's exciting, but once you've played it as long as we have, coming across one of these in your caves is gonna elicit a little bit more than exhaling air out of your nose. Like, oh, that's kinda neat I guess, but we can make it so much better. Since what Young's done here in this mod, it changed the mineshafts from just feeling like some leftover world generation, and instead makes them a part of their environment. Like now, there's 13 different biome variants for each one of these. And exploring them becomes a lot more fun too, since now there's a network of tunnels that you have to go through. But what I love about this is that it's still not unrecognizable as the original mine shafts, but just a refresh. And really, I think that's all that the mine shafts need. They don't need a complete overhaul, just something more interesting than having them generate with chains, since that's about the most recent update that we got to these, and I think they deserve more. And just like our mine shafts change, we've also got some new updates to how the dungeons look. Since in current versions, when you find one of these, it's hardly even exciting enough to justify making a mob farm here. You can build a way better one without the need for a spawner. So here, not only will the dungeons look differently for the different mobs that spawn inside, like turning the spider dungeons into caves or making the fortress for the undead, but you're also gonna find different kinds of things inside, like unique banner patterns, lanterns, and not to mention a whole bunch of loot to find as well. Aesthetic-wise alone, I already think this should be in the game, but add on the fact of how it changes the gameplay as well with all the different things that it offers inside, yeah, now I think it's a twofer. What happens if you take the desert well and couldn't leave well enough alone? Well, you'd probably end up with something like this. See, what Pixelplex did here is build a three to one scaled up model of the original desert well. And now it's not as boring as just a little bit of water spawn in the desert, but instead it feels a lot more like an oasis. We'd have villagers spawn here, some unique decorations of furniture, and not to mention a whole lot more water. Yeah, it even does the well part better than the original well, which I think is just great. The biggest change that the pillager outposts have gotten recently was in 1.19 where they were changed to spawn with a laze, as well as the new goat horns. And don't get me wrong, I like a laze and I like goat horns, but that really doesn't speak much to the structure itself, does it? So to fix that up and modernize this, I think taking after just something 23's example could be a really nice touch for the game. Off the bat, this already looks more like a fortress, and you won't have to worry about it accidentally burning down if the world generation got unlucky. But not only are these bigger, but there's also gonna be more rooms and loot to find inside. And that's really about all you need to motivate me into getting it into the game. Part of the fun of exploring these structures is having something to explore, so if it offers that, that's all we need. The addition of amethyst geodes to Minecraft was exciting, or at least it seemed like it would be. After all, Amethyst is pretty, and the other blocks are nice as well, but unfortunately, Amethyst isn't nearly as useful as the other things that we're able to get in the game. So maybe we could fix that by adding in new rare geodes to find. Like if you're exploring in the mountain type biomes, you might find this, the Emerald Geode. Or if you're exploring in the nether, you could find the Quartz Geode. And perhaps the most dangerous the bunch is when you go and find one of these Echo Geodes spawn in the deep dark. But the reason that you want to go track one down is that they have a renewable source of the Echo Shards. Which, if your luck is as bad as mine, I'd rather look for one of these and milk it dry instead of having to go through a whole bunch of other ancient cities. That just seems safer. You ever wonder what the ancient city would look like before it was so ancient? And that's what Unsorted Guy did here in this build. And really, this is just one great example of many different people who have gone through and completely restored the ancient city. You definitely have to clear out all the skulk to make it livable, but once you do, no other hostile mobs spawn down there. Which I've gotta say, is a benefit, even if I don't like the warden. And I think how this comment puts it underneath the original video is a good point. Imagine if there was a mod that would allow us the rare chance to find some of these cities before they got so run down, which could offer up a new passive species to trade with. I mean, we've shown off goblins in the past, I would love to see them and have it down here. Woodland mansions stick out like a sore thumb inside of the dark oak forest, so to make them a little less lonely, and make a bit more lore sense, we could take after Trixie Block and add in an abandoned village that spawns in the Dark Oak Forest. Now, Minecraft already has worn down abandoned villages, but let's be honest, these zombie villages are little more than a reskin, and I think what's happening here would be a lot more interesting. Like, maybe this is where the pillagers used to live when they were actually villagers, and then they moved out and upgraded to a mansion. I think that'd be a fun way to make these forests a lot more exciting, especially because with all the tree coverage, you could really hide one of these until you get up close and personal making it even more exciting to find. Fossils 
puzzles are one of the rarest things you can find in Minecraft, but for how rare they are, they're not exactly the most exciting. Now granted, you could offer these off for a little bit of lore with the sniffer, or other ancient mobs like that, but I think when you look at this example in the snowy biome, that definitely gets a lot more exciting. And the idea of seeing these huge fossils that are just out in the open, being reminiscent of other monsters or even mammoths would be so cool. I mean, we already got archaeology somewhat into the game, I think fossils are the next logical step to go along with that. And with that folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, alright?